Hi, and thanks for joining me today. So I've got the Tonic Craft Kit number 38 here. And in this video, I'll be actually creating the floral gift wallet itself. So basically using uh, this die set the way that it was designed or intended to be used. So if you're curious to know what all came in the craft kit, I do have an unboxing video, which I'll link to at the um, upper right corner here and as well at the end of the video. I did already die cut pretty much, um, I think, hopefully everything that I'll need um, to create this wallet. And uh, I am not using the papers that came in the kit, mostly because I plan to flip this kit, meaning I'll create some cards that are uh, flat, at least one flat, one layered, one interactive, and one pop-up card. And I'm kind of saving the papers for that craft session. Um, but in the meantime, I do have um, a January birthday and um, I'll be sending out a gift card to um, my sister-in-law, so I wanted to make a little gift wallet for her so that we can put her gift card in it. So what I've done is I've taken the main die and I've actually, um, half of the die set looks like this. So I've just taken this main outer die here and I've cut into some glitter card. This is craft um, from Tonic Studios. It's um, in the Craft Perfect line. I will kind of uh, make mention that even though this is like non-shed, pretty low shed um, glitter card, it when you start to bend and fold it, it's um, more likely to crack. So I noticed that um, initially and all I did to prevent it from cracking further and um, just kind of making it look a little neater is I just took some um, just plain old tacky glue and I happen to use pH uh, neutral from Lineco and I just ran some glue down all of the um, areas that are folded and that way that glue just seeps into the paper, it strengthens it a little bit and um, prevents it from cracking, but it also just sort of encases all of that glitter um, as well. So I did that both along this edge and this edge here, and then um, I did it along these two tabbed edges here. And for these, because I noticed it in time, I actually put the glue on before I um, actually folded the card. So all I'm going to do is the die does um, emboss some score lines and I, all I'm going to do is just go over those score lines just with a ball stylus and that will just, you know, kind of um, reintroduce those score lines which were filled in a little bit when I put the tacky glue over it. So that's all I'm doing here. Usually probably not a necessary step um, if you're using other type of card but uh, this was so pretty I just really wanted to use it. And because the glitter card is single-sided. What I did was just from a lighter weight paper, I took the same die and die cut a second um, piece. And what I'll do is I am going to use, um, because this is thin, I'm not going to use a tacky glue, but instead I'm going to use some double-sided adhesive. So one of the things with tacky glue is because it is wire based, it um, may warp your paper. And on cardstock, that's usually, especially um, if you use a really high quality tacky glue, like the Lanco pH neutral, you're not going to have much of a problem in terms of warping, um, if any at all. But this is pretty thin paper. This is almost almost copy paper thin um, and I I keep I have a paper pad of this 
pretty thin um, paper for occasions like these where I don't I don't want um, too much thickness but I still want a little something by way of design so I'm just gonna go all the way around and I am gonna go right on either sides of score lines just to make sure I'm not gonna put any adhesive where it is scored so where um, this will fold just so that it can still fold nicely but I want to be on either side of those score lines so that everything kind of stays flush and attached so you could probably use a um, tape runner as well but I'll just do that and then I do want to get these tabs um, adhered as well so I'll just use my super thin 1 8 inch and I'll just get that outer tab that should be good enough to keep it nice and secure And Okay, so I've got all of um, the paper liners removed, and you could remove the liners, you know, one at a time as you attach it, but I'm just going to go for it, and once you have one side lined up, um, everything should fall in place as you go. And I'm not using my score tape, which is um, super, super sticky, but this is still pretty decent quality. And so it will adhere just fine. Okay, give that really good burnish. So that's the inside of my wallet and I'll just start to bend this just gradually and our two sides I want to give that a little bit of a bend start folding these in I'm just doing it gradually just so that again I can avoid any additional cracking Burnish that score line just a bit more. There we go. And you can just kind of roll it between your fingers just to get that to curl over. And there are two little score lines there just to give a little bit of a gusset to your pocket. So there's that. That's, that is the base of our wallet. Then I've got a lot of decorative um, pieces cut.
Okay, so um, starting on the outside, I have um, this piece. So we have a um, die that will cut out this decorative panel, and that one is right here. And it's got a nice stitched, kind of a wonky stitched edge to it. And I don't know if you'll recognize any of these papers, but I think they were from the Winter Wonderland um, craft kit. So these were some of the leftovers from that. And I think I'm going to put the silver one right there. And then I've got um, this one also cut from the same. This is um, one of their, I think, I can't remember the actual name, but it's uh, I think pinstripey and this one all I did to get this is I took the this die here and I die cut once from this and then you also get a verso die so once you've die cut this piece out you can then run it through your die cutting machine again with the verso die centered um, within there and then that gives you this really kind of fine detailed really lacy fun um, panel to decorate that edge with and let's see I think the rest of most of the rest are for for the um, inside there but I do also have um, this cute really cute little buckle so um, these little uh, buckles actually there are two versions of these that come in the set and so you have this one with the scalloped edge and then there's one with a more straight edge and I've just die cut it twice out of silver um, because I'm gonna put them front and back and using some of um, the handcrafted cotton papers I'm using that as almost um, the fabric buckle um, that will loop through my buckle and one of the things to keep in mind is that the um, I don't think the buckle is exactly symmetrical so they do fit a very specific way if you're gonna do them front to back like this and then the other thing is just to create the illusion that this paper is actually you know fabric that's you know woven through the buckle just um, keep in mind on one side you'll want your paper to go above that middle bar and on the other side you want it to go below that middle bar it's just a small little attention to detail that I think kind of pulls off the illusion that this is a fabric piece of fabric and and that it's kind of buckled through um, or kind of woven through this metal buckle piece. Metal, putting that in quotes. <laughs> so once I get that together, this is actually going to go onto the front of my wallet like this. I am considering um, closure options and I might want to sneak a little magnet into this. So what I'm going to do is, um, before I glue anything down, oh yeah, these are pretty small. I think they're five millimeter and I'm going to put one inside this buckle here and it's going to get hidden by that piece. And then my second one is going to go on this panel. So. I don't want to glue this down just yet because I want to make sure that I have it positioned correctly. But since this is just going to go right over the front, I can glue this decorative panel down first. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. And I'm just going to get a thin line of glue all the way around.
Okay, now that I have that done, I'm going to just start to get this positioned. And by that, I mean I'm going to just put a little bit of glue. It'll just make it a little bit easier to um, hold this in place if I have these two halves put together just at the very top here. And I'm not going to glue the bottom or the buckle together just yet because that's where I'm going to be hiding my magnet. But this just helps it so that it's all one piece. Now I can kind of hold this, figure out how this is going to get positioned. And I think I might do something like that. Yeah, I think that'll work. And yeah, so I'm just gonna put my a bit of score tape, uh, which I like to use anytime I'm putting down a magnet. So I'm gonna put a little bit of score tape. And I do want to make sure that my buckle is nice and straight. And that my paper is kind of centered. And I'll just peel that back. I'm gonna pop in one of my magnets. I'm just gonna go right I think I want it to go. Let me put this right. I'm gonna put the paper liner back just so that I can double check how far down I want that magnet and yeah where I have it might be a little too low I'm gonna move that up a little bit I really want it across this middle bar here is where I want the magnet to go Even a little higher would probably be okay. All right, so that's nice and in there. And then a little bit of liquid glue. I'm gonna get some glue on the buckle also. And now I can adhere the rest of this down. Perfect. So there's that. Now before I put the decorative panel on the bottom, I want to put the matching magnet down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to glue this down to the front. And what I'll do is put a little bit of score tape. I'm going to use a combination of both score tape and some liquid glue. Really make sure that it's going to stick. And now that that's down, 
I can just put the other half of my magnet right under there. And I'll put a little bit of So I just put double sided adhesive, uh, the paper side is under at the bottom. So the magnet should be stuck to there and it's being held right exactly in place of where we put our first magnet. So when we push this down, that should adhere our magnet to this panel and it should be in the exact correct location and peel this up and then I'll get some liquid glue on this panel. Gluing onto glitter card, I think um, a liquid glue works really well. It'll soak right into that glitter and um, create a really permanent bond and as well actually before I forget just want to make sure I put a little extra over the magnet and I do want to give this a good burnish but I'll burnish it from this side because I don't want to scratch up that really pretty paper and gently go over the magnet too. Okay, so. I'm glad I moved that up because the magnet is just at the end there. So there we have our closure. So it's a small magnet, so it's not the strongest, but um, but I think that for this purpose, it's it's going to work fine. Um, and so now onto the inside. So what I've done on the inside is I've cut myself a few decorative pieces. And um, this is the um, pocket. So that's just going to go right here. It does have a couple score lines. Or you can fold that and it will just attach to these side panels glue tabs here so that's gonna go there um, got that piece there I do have a decorative panel here and what I've done here is um, let me show you this bottom piece so using the same as this die that cuts the silver panel. I've just cut it out of some blue. And then you've got some really fun um, decorative panels and dies that you can cut out or cut into your card. So for example, there are some Verso dies that just cut this um, kind of rectangle section out. And you actually have one that's decorative, that's the one I've used here. And then you have two that actually cut a sentiment into your card. So um, it just leaves the um, um, portions 
in your card intact, but it just cuts away um, so that you have that really nice pattern. So uh, one of the sentiments is, it's your birthday, and then the other one says, a, a little birdie told me. So, and then it's got like a cute little bird too. So super cute. Then we have another die that will cut out this ring rectangle here, and that's this plain uh, straight edge rectangle. And that's really great because there are these um, sort of uh, debossing plates, and this um, size rectangle is perfect for debossing a sentiment into your panel. So embossing will raise it, debossing will actually um, kind of put an indentation into your card. And so this one says a little um, gift for someone special. So if I tilt that, you can kind of see all that dimension that you get. And it's um, a really nice effect. And it may seem really subtle, but um, it's very legible. So um, don't worry too much if, if you're not really seeing you know, able to read it um, on screen, it's it's really super legible. And then down here, all I've done is um, using the same Verso die, I've just put some uh, pearlescent silver on the back, which is more grayish silver, and then taking the exact same kind of pinstripey silver, I've just die cut um, just this portion of the die and this portion. So you don't have to waste an entire panel if if you don't want. You can just put card right behind the uh, places that you wanna inlay back in. And so that's what I did here. And here, this is actually not um, one of the pieces that falls out of this design. This little flourish here originally would be in blue, but I felt like I needed to bring a little bit of the shiny silver all the way across, and so I wanted a bit more silver on this right-hand side of the pattern, but there wasn't anything that dropped out of this that obviously made sense to kind of inlay back in. So I thought, well, why not just create my own um, inlay? So what I did was snipped away the blue and then inlaid this silver piece in. And so um, hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but uh, if it was, I am doing the exact same technique to this top flap. And so I'll show you what I mean. I've already um, die cut it out of um, my pearlescent silver. So that's gonna be my backing. And then I um, die cut this top flap in blue, I put the Verso die in. That got me the nice blue sort of lacy pattern here. I backed the same Verso die with some of the silver pinstripe, but just in the areas where, um, actually, in fact, those were what fell out of the front. <laughs> so since I had this piece, and if you've ever seen any of my other videos, you know that anytime I'm using a specialty card, I, I love all the tonic specialty cards, and I always try to use as much of it as possible. So taking what fell out from this panel, I've inlaid that back into this piece, and that gave me this design. However, I feel like I want a little bit of silver up here. So what I did was I um, die cut uh, using the Verso die, but just putting card behind this area, I've actually die cut out this little flower. So you can see that there. And before I stick all of this down, what I'm gonna do is just carefully snip away um, the blue that's under this. You could just um, glue the silver right on top and that would look just fine. But because the rest of these silver pieces are inlaid, it's all flush with the blue. And I wanted to keep it consistent in that way. And so what I'm gonna do is just snip away this little flower from the blue panel I have. So, 
just going to go in and make sure that I don't snip too much, but, and then if it, I don't think I'll use this again, so what I'll do is snip a little bit away, just so that I can have a little bit more room for my scissors to work away. And then I don't quite remember how far down this went. So I'm just going to match it up there and then follow that. So I think I think I just about have it. All right. So now what I can do is just go ahead and glue this down and then put this flower right back in. There. So let me do a dry fit cuz once this blue panel is glued down. I'm not going to be able to take any more snips away. So there's everything lined up. I think I'm going to snip a little bit away from this piece. Okay. So where I've inlaid, I already have a little bit of double-sided adhesive just to hold those pieces in. So I'll take those off first. And then the last thing will be to put my silver piece right back in. And there you have it. So 
not completely necessary to do that. And it is a little bit different from the rest of the inlaying, but I feel like just adding that little bit of silver was um, kind of fun. Just gives it a little bit more um, kind of shine throughout the entire panel. And I was just curious to see if the technique would work as well. So, um, so there's that. Now, the last panel um, is going to be this one that needs to be assembled. So what I've done for this one, I have, um, I thought it was just a little plain by itself. So just looking at my little scraps, I just took these really, really thin strips and I'm just going to put a little thin strip right across, right across this whole panel. So I've got a little bit of that pinstripe, a thin on the top, some of my glitter card in the middle, and then another a little bit wider um, strip of that pinstripe silver below. And this is already backed, so I just need to take that off. Let's actually make sure we're straight. How far up? I like to just really make sure all my decorative panels are um, complete. That way you can really give it a good burnish from the back side if you need to while everything is flat and not attached to anything else. So There's that. Okay, so now we just need to uh, glue everything together. So I'll start with the easiest. This is just decorative here, so I can put And since this is just going onto paper, I can actually just use, I'll just continue using double-sided adhesive. This side is pearlescent, and so I'll just use some liquid tacky glue. Make sure it sticks really well. And then our final piece, just need a little bit of glue. So keep in mind, there's two score lines. So you've got a gusset and then a glue tab. So you just want glue on the glue tab and not on the gusset. And the same will be true of the side tabs too. Thank you. 
And you do want to line this up so there is a gusset at the bottom. So you want that bottom gusset to kind of match up with that. So if that's hard to see, I'm just going to bend this. That's where the liquid, having liquid glue is really helpful. Because I don't want it to be right on top of that seam score line. That way it all sits nicely inside. So. Then I'll do the same on the sides, bend this over. did put this on in it in order to let it have a little bit of time to dry so that it gets a little bit tacky and grabs a little bit faster. And I'm going to put my bone folder in just so that I can have something to press against. You could use... That was a little thick, maybe my metal ruler. Can't really burnish because it's got that gusset, but you could just push it. I'm pushing up on my ruler and down from the top. So there you have that. So I like having just that little accent of the glitter kind of meets up with um, the sides because you can see these side gussets. Um, so there's that. And then if you Wanted to go the extra mile, um, you could take another one of these um, decorative panels, one of these silver ones, because that will actually, um, here's one from a different type of paper, that actually does fit in here. So you could do that, but um, it's really the perfect size for a gift card. So. Just got a card here, so you can put that right in there like that. And then close it up, and you've got perfect little gift wallet. So, and I left it kind of plain on the back, which um, I think is perfectly okay because it's got such pretty glitter paper. But that will be... Um, a perfect little gift. We, my husband and I give a lot of gift cards out. So, um, I really love this die set because you can really just let your imagination, um, and your papers create all sorts of styles and different looks. And I love having this extra little embellishment piece of the buckle there. So pretty fun. Um, pretty quick to put together, especially if you're not doing any of um, the inlaying and in particular snipping away parts of your um, kind of verso dies. It goes so much faster when you're not um, doing a lot of that work. But, um, but I like that you have all of the dies included so that that's an option if that's what you want it to do. And I've only used a small portion of the decorative um, pieces that are available because you have the um, verso sentiment that you can cut. And what's nice is all of these little plates, um, they work on both this panel and this panel as well. So you can kind of mix and match and um, really, you know, have a lot of different options. So that's um, that project. And I will um, 
link to, again, my unboxing of the craft kit itself. And as well, my next project for this um, is actually going to be a little brag book or mini album. I, I don't wa really want to call it a mini album because it's so small, but this is such the perfect size for maybe a little brag book that you would keep in your um, purse or pocketbook. And, you know, maybe it's... Um, I'm making it in particular for my husband's stepsister because she just had her first baby and um, her baby is turning one. And so this is going to be um, our gift to her is this little um, brag book. And I thought it might be nice if, you know, especially new moms, they might like to carry a lot of photos of their babies. And so she can just print out these really cute small two by two photos of her uh, baby and carry it around in her pocketbook and you know if she wants to show off photos of her baby she's got a small little collection and a beautiful little way to present it as well so I'll link to that video at the end of this one too so if you're interested to see that project um, hop on over and check that out thank you again for joining me and I hope you're doing well have a fantastic day Bye.